Wow. It's kind of incredible how fast things are changing in software development, isn't it? It really is. Feels like just yesterday we were excited about basic autocomplete, and now... Mm -hmm. Well, now AI is actually writing code. It's wild. Absolutely. And the way developers are starting to use these large language models, um, it's really splitting into different approaches. Yeah, that's what we want to get into today, right? Uh -huh. These two sort of emerging paths. Exactly. Getting a handle on them is, I think, going to be pretty critical for anyone building software. Okay, so let's do it. This deep dive is all built around a paper uh, called Vibe Coding versus Agentic Coding, Fundamentals and Practical Implications of Agentic AI. Came out on ArcSeaf really recently, May 26, 2025. Right. And our mission, your mission with us today is basically to get a solid feel for these two concepts, Vibe Coding, Agentic Coding. What are they really about? And, you know, what impact could they have moving straight from that research? So you get the core ideas without getting totally swamped in the jargon. That's the plan. Think of it as your fast track to the cutting edge. And speaking of getting ahead, we wanted to mention a great way to deepen your AI knowledge. Oh, yeah. The AI course over at rajamanicom.com. It's a really comprehensive resource. And for you, our listeners, we've got a special deal. Nice. Use the coupon code QPT, that's Q-P time at checkout, and you'll get a discount. Seriously, check it out. It's a solid investment. Good tip. Okay, so let's unpack that first one, vibe coding. What's the main idea there? Right, vibe coding. The core concept is uh, the developer acts more like a collaborator, a guide, working closely with an LLM using natural language. So talking to the AI instead of just typing strict code. Pretty much. You're shifting away from writing every single line yourself and focusing more on explaining your intention, what you want the code to do in plain English. Less about semicolons, more about the big picture vision. Exactly. Andres Carpathy helped popularize the term vibe coding, and it really captures that shift. It's less about precise syntax and more about specifying intent, outlining the architecture, and sort of uh, interactively debugging the AI. That sounds way more intuitive, potentially. Sometimes just saying what you need is the hardest part. For sure. And a key part of vibe coding is this iterative loop. You prompt the AI, it gives you code, you check it out, maybe run it, and then give feedback, no, that's not quite right, try it this way, or okay, good, now add this feature. Like a conversation with a coding partner. A very fast, very knowledgeable partner, yeah. And it makes sense, this has taken off now, right? With models like ChatGPT and tools like Replit AI, Cursor, they make that natural language interaction actually work well. Right, the tech caught up to the idea. Exactly. The paper we're looking at has a diagram, figure 1A, that shows this flow, natural language dash code generation dash mole testing. Okay, so the human testing part is still key. You don't just trust the output blindly. Definitely not. You're still the one validated. The paper talks about the semiotics of it, how natural language becomes the main input the sign the LLM interprets to produce CARED. It's a kind of translation process. Okay, now this is interesting. Figure two in the paper breaks down the skills and the sort of mental shifts needed for vibe coding. Can you walk us through those? Yeah, absolutely. Figure two highlights five things. Thinking, framework, checkpoints, debugging, and context. Okay, thinking. Thinking is about the strategy. Yeah. You still need to understand the problem, the architecture you're aiming for. The AI writes code, but you provide the blueprint, the vision. Makes sense. Framework. Framework means you still need to know your tools, your libraries, your platforms. If you're asking for React code, you still kind of need to understand React principles, right? The AI isn't magic. It builds on existing structures. Got it. You need the foundational knowledge. What about checkpoints? Crucial. This means using version control, like Git, religiously. LLM output can be unpredictable sometimes. So frequent commits are your safety net. Make a branch, let the AI try something. If it goes sideways, you just roll back. Oh, like save points in a game. Smart. Mm -hmm. Debugging must be different too. It is. It becomes more collaborative. You find a bug. You don't just stare at the code yourself. You feed the error message, the code snippet, what you expected to happen, back to the LLM. And the AI helps pinpoint the issue. Yeah, it can suggest fixes or even try implementing them. But again, your judgment is key. You have to evaluate its suggestions. It's an assistant, not the boss. A very capable assistant. Okay, last one. Context. Context is everything you feed the LLM besides the immediate prompt. Previous prompts, other relevant code files from your project, project goals, the richer the context, the better the AI understands what you actually need. So an ongoing dialogue, not just one-off requests. Exactly. That tight, iterative loop again. Prompt, response, review, refine. And tools are popping up for this. Yeah. The paper mentions AI-enhanced IDEs like Cursor 
or windsurf, where the chat is built right in. Cloud platforms like Replit too, but importantly, the actual running and testing of that usually still happens in your regular dev environment managed by you. Okay, so the AI generates, but you deploy and validate in the real world. Right, and vibe coding really shines in those early exploratory phase prototyping, trying out ideas quickly. But the paper warns you still need discipline, checkpointing, refactoring. Otherwise, you can end up with messy code depth. Good for speed and creativity, but keep an eye on quality. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. The paper listed 10 use cases. Can you give us a flavor of those? Sure, they show the breadth. Like building a personal portfolio website with React, you can prompt iteratively, create a header, make it responsive, add a project section, customizing it through conversation. Ew. Or creating interactive data dashboards with JavaScript, chart.js or D3.js. Even if you're not a visualization expert, you can ask. Generate a bar chart from this data, add a filter for dates, make sure it's accessible. That's huge for people who aren't hardcore front-end devs, but need visuals. Totally. Other examples are things like uh, automating daily email reports with Python, building a simple to-do web app with Vue.js, generating a startup landing page with Tailwind CSS, creating REST API endpoints in Node.js. Wow, okay. Even generating unit tests with Jest, exploring a new framework like Next.js, prototyping animation, or automating Google Sheets with AppScript quite diverse. Yeah, it really shows how versatile that natural language interface can be. Hmm. Okay, solid picture of vibe coding. Let's switch gears. Agentic coding. What's the core idea here? Agentic coding is, well, it's a bigger leap towards automation. The idea is you have these autonomous AI agents that develop software based on goals you set, but with much less direct step-by-step -step human guidance. So less collaboration, more delegation. You give the AI a mission and it tries to accomplish it. Precisely. You define the high-level objective and the agent figures out the plan and executes. The paper lists key capabilities for these agents shown in figure three. Things like interpreting high-level goals, planning and breaking down tasks, using tools, and this is key, like file systems, compilers, Git, APIs, web browsers. So they can actually interact with the development environment. Yes, autonomously. They can execute code, test it, iterate, retry if something fails. They can reason, problem solve using heuristics or searching documentation. They maintain context over longer periods, manage state, API keys. Whoa. And get this. They can even do self-reflection and correction. Self-reflection. How does that work? It means the agent can kind of evaluate its own work, see if it's on the right track, identify problems in its approach, and adjust its plan autonomously. The paper mentions Codex using git diff for making pull requests, and another one, Jules, handling API integration errors on its own. Okay, that's a significant step up in autonomy, and Figure 1B shows this workflow. Right, Figure 1B shows high-level goal, Autonomous actions, independent tests. The developer sets the goal, the agent does the work, and runs the tests. So the human role changes dramatically from sure. co-pilot to what? Director? Supervisor? Supervisor or architect seems about right. You define the mission, you monitor, and you evaluate the final outcome. Much less hands-on, moment to moment. Can you give an example? How would this work in practice? The paper uses that Joule system again. Task. Integrate the Google Gemini API into an existing robotics code base. Okay. So Joules autonomously cloned the GitHub repo, parsed the yuddm to understand the project, identified which files needed changes, created new data classes for the API, injected the code to call the API, updated the documentation with setup info, and then committed everything to a new Git branch. All by itself, based on just the high-level goal. That's the idea. It's a multi-step, complex task handled autonomously. It shows the potential. That is impressive. What's the architecture behind systems like this? Figure 3 again? Yeah, Figure 3 gives a conceptual view. Typically, you have a core reasoning engine, usually an LLM, then a planning module to break down goals, a tool use module for interacting with the environment files, Git APIs, memory and context management, and crucially, a sandboxed execution. The sandbox seems vital for safety. Absolutely essential. You don't want an autonomous agent accidentally messing up your whole system. It needs a safe place to operate. And this whole setup changes the interaction. Less prompting for code snippets, more defining missions, and checking results. Right. So what are the use cases for agentic coding? The paper lists 10 here too. Yeah, and these tend to be more complex system level tasks. Think automated code base refactoring, modernizing legacy CUN, maybe migrating authentication systems like OAuth2. Okay, big jobs. Right automating routine engineering chores, dependency upgrades across a huge project, enforcing code style, regenerating tests automatically, managing CICD pipelines. The stuff that's important, 
but tedious and error-prone for humans. Exactly. Also, regression bug fixings, analyzing logs, finding the root cause, maybe even patching it automatically, setting up CICD with GitHub Actions or GitLab CI, automated security scanning and patching based on policies, managing infrastructure as code with Terraform, generating documentation automatically, like API docs, performance optimization profiling, code, finding bottlenecks, even end to end feature implementation from UI to backend to test and smart contract development and auditing. Okay, so agentic coding is really aiming at automating significant chunks of the development lifecycle. Now, the big comparison Vibe versus agentic. How do they stack up? This is where the paper gets really detailed mm -hmm. using several tables and fig. Table I is a great starting point. It compares them across loads of dimensions like autonomy level, low, moderate for Vibe, moderate, high for agentic. Developer role, co-pilot, implementer for Vibe, architect supervisor for Agentic, interaction model, conversational prompts for Vibe, goal delegation for Agentic, planning mostly human and Vibe, mostly AI and Agentic, tool use, execution environment, error handling, task scope, context management. It breaks down the differences. What are the biggest standout differences for you? Definitely the autonomy and the developer role shift. That's fundamental. And how planning happens is it you figuring out the steps or the AI, that changes everything. Yeah, that locus of control difference seems key. For sure. Then table two compares the architect, how systems are orchestrated, the execution engines, multi-agent coordination, tool integration, val validation pipelines, security, observability, deployment strategy. Figure five visualizes these architectural. Okay. And how the code actually runs. Table three. Yep. Table three focuses on execution models. Vibe coding usually means the developer runs the code in their normal IDE or terminal. Agentic coding often uses autonomous pipelines within the agent's own sandbox environment. Which affects feedback loops, right? Exactly. Vibe is human reactive feedback. Agentic is more goal-driven, integrated feedback within the AI's process. Safety to Vibe relies on human oversight. Agentic tries to build in automated safeguards and validation. So Agentic aims for built-in safety net. That's the goal. And Table 4 looks at the practical workflow differences roles again. Typical patterns, how you engage with the system, human factors. It really helps you see where each might fit. It sounds like Vive coding is maybe easier to start with, but needs constant oversight, while Agentic coding automates more, but needs careful setup and trust in the agent. That sums it up pretty well. The paper also touches on cognitive load and productivity difference. Then table V gets into implementation specifics like prompt engineer. You need precise prompts for Vibe, but more high level hierarchical goals for agentic. Different ways of talking to the AI. Right, and reviewed bugging, mostly manual for Vibe, ideally more automated for agentic. It also lists example tools for each side, chat GPT, replit for Vibe, things like codex, maybe Claude code, Jewels for agent. It's fascinating seeing these two distinct approaches take shape. What about the future? Where does the paper see this heading? Figure eight. Yeah, figure eight maps out future trends. A big one is the rise of hybrid model, blending the strengths of both. So not necessarily an either. Probably not long term. You might see vibe like tools get better at execution and agentic tools get better, more conversational interfaces. It's likely a spectrum may be converging. The paper notes adoption trends to enterprises looking at agentic for automation. While vibe is great for learning and individual prototyping, but it stresses using both strategically balanced development. Are there limitations? Mm -hmm. Challenges mentioned? Figure seven. Oh yeah, figure seven covers those. For agentic risk of de-skilling developers if they rely too much on agents, potential for silent errors the AI makes but doesn't report well, new security risks from autonomous code. Hmm, okay. And for Vibe. For Vibe. LLM reasoning can be opaque. Why did it generate that code? Integrating it smoothly into existing complex dev workflows can be tricky, and code quality can drift if you don't maintain rigorous human review. Definitely things to watch out for. For sure. The paper's future roadmap for agentic AI focuses on things like trustworthy autonomy, more explainable AI, better sandboxing, mm -hmm. better multi-agent systems that can collaborate, persistent memory for agents, better human AI collaboration infrastructure, and designing those hybrid workflows effectively. It also gives a quick history of how AI agents evolved to this point. This has been incredibly insightful. Okay, let's try to sum up the key takeaways. Vibe coding. Great for exploring, prototyping, using natural language mm -hmm. as a co-creator, human very much in the loop. Right. Agentic coding aims for more automation, tackles bigger, complex tasks with autonomous agents, human sets the goal, supervises. Yeah, exactly. And the future probably involves blending these, using the right approach for the right task. That seems to be the direction. Understanding both is definitely becoming crucial for anyone in software. It really makes you wonder how our jobs will change, what skills we'll need, how will this human-AI partnership reshape software engineering itself? 
that's something to chew on. Definitely. And hey, as we wrap up, just one more reminder about that great AI course at rogermanicum.com. If you want to dive deeper into this stuff, it's a solid resource. And remember that discount code, QPT. Just enter Q-PT at checkout. Good reminder. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Hope this gave you a clearer picture of vibe and agentic coding. Yeah, thanks for diving deep with us. We'll catch you next time.